<laughs> so I had a contraction. They were like, bear down. I was like, what just happened? And I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, you want me to push? I can push way mm -hmm. harder than that. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. And so I, I told him, I was like, you let me know when I can need to push. I will push this baby out. Judah Joseph. Judah Joseph Mast. <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome back. I am sitting down finally to film about Judah's birth, a video about Judah's birth. I know that I won't regret doing this. Uh, I remember feeling like I was farther along in the pregnancy than I actually was um, the whole time I was pregnant and my due date was kind of different than what the doctors had given me. Uh, only by two weeks, but he ended up coming. He was born then at 39 weeks, which I kind of felt like I was full term, or I kind of felt like I was 40 weeks at that point. And so it was kind of, it was, it was, it was perfect timing. It was perfect timing. But anyhow, this was my third baby my third baby and i actually love giving birth i it's exciting and it's it's just one of the coolest experiences i think and um it's just so beautiful so i was really looking forward to that whole process so i had an appointment and uh, it was wednesday to go in and see my doctor and at the end, they check you to see if you've progressed at all or if any signs of giving birth are near. And yeah, it was Wednesday the 16th. I went in the afternoon. I was like, for sure, I am. I have got some progression happening. Sure, I'm close. For sure, I'm close. Because I had been feeling Braxton Hicks probably since 20... <laughs> three 24 weeks on which I don't think that's uncommon and he was just taking up so much space I could feel him really really low and I could feel him really high and there are moments where like he would kick and I was like oh my gosh he's gonna come out <laughs> which he never did praise god but I have I felt that at the end of my pregnancy so anyhow when I went into the doctor's on Wednesday September 16th they were like oh you're only uh about two, two and a half centimeters dilated. And I think at that point I was about 50% effaced. I was just so ready to give birth because he was so big in my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, I could go like three more weeks. I could go like four more weeks. Cause I was, I was like 38 weeks and some change. And so I was so ready to have him. They did a membrane sweep and uh, they sent me home. Okay. So yeah, Wednesday night I went to bed. I think I felt some on and off Wednesday night. Some contractions. They weren't super consistent. Um, they weren't super intense. I think I have a pretty high pain tolerance. I was feeling them on and off. Woke up Thursday morning and then I started having them kind of throughout the day. But I was fairly active. Again, they weren't super consistent. I would start timing them. Um, but they weren't super intense. And then Thursday evening, I'm pretty sure I had contractions all night long. Yeah, so Thursday, I had them on and off. Yeah, I was not convinced that I was in labor yet. Obviously, my water hadn't broken. And so I was like, ah, whatever. It could mean nothing. Oh, yeah, got to Thursday night then. I started having them really, really consistent to the point where I barely got any sleep. I mean, I was... It was contractions basically for it felt like almost I don't know eight hours on and off which is extremely tiring in the middle of the night yeah it was just it was exhausting but it's still like my water didn't break so I still knew that we were okay and for me I, I don't think I was even convinced at that point if I was in labor I was like oh okay well whatever this is it's still helping me along but then I woke up Friday morning so incredibly exhausted and Shane and I were like, let's go for a walk. 
and let's see if this picks things up. Went for a walk and I had no contractions. I mean, we were probably gone for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Basically, I was kind of confused at what was happening because I went from like having consistent, you know, contractions, not super hard, and I was getting excited and I was timing them, and then they kind of petered off again. Yeah. You just took your sweet time, didn't you? So anyways, Friday night, uh, September 18th then, it was about 8.30, I started having some pretty strong ones, and then at about 9 o'clock, I started timing them, and they didn't stop. They were consistent for a full hour, and I remember I was sitting in Shane's office chair in the hallway and just chatting with my sister, and with Shane, we were just kind of having a heart-to-heart, -heart and I had a couple that were so painful, and I was like, I think we should go in, I think we should do this. We had grabbed our bags, we were going to the hospital, and I remember I had a contraction. I could barely stand, and I like had to put my hand on the truck, and I was like, holy moly, that was a painful one. I think it is good that we're going to the hospital right now. But I get there, we're checking in, I have another really hard one, and I was like, okay, we can do this, this is great, maybe we're doing this. And I get up, we get upstairs at the front, like front desk where you check in and they ask you how far along I was because at that point I was 38 weeks and like five days or something like that and I could tell the nurses were not impressed with me like oh she doesn't know what she's doing like she I could sense they were like mm, she's going home like they all didn't really say much to me and I was like mm, I better be farther along than what I was they check me so I could you know I'm in there and they check me and I was three and a half <laughs> centimeters dilated, which if you know anything, you have to be 10 centimeters dilated, you're ready to push, like you are, you are giving birth to your baby. You wanna talk too. And so I was kind of discouraged because I had been two and a half centimeters dilated on Wednesday. Now this is Friday night, so I really didn't progress, but I was having lots of contractions at home on and off. So I was expecting to be much farther along and the contractions were painful, but I wasn't as as far along as I thought it was. But they were like, okay, well, we'll keep you f for like an hour and we'll monitor you. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, let's just chill. So I, I, they kept me in the room and I we didn't really like settle in because I what we weren't sure what was gonna happen it's kind of that like unknown time where you're like okay they could send me home <laughs> or I could this could be it an hour passes and they come back in and they check me and I think the nurses were genuinely shocked with me they're like oh my gosh you are six and a half centimeters dilated so in about 45 minutes I dilated three centimeters <laughs> from three and a half to six and a half and I hadn't gotten on any kind of medicine at all and I didn't think they were that bad but I was just so grateful though that we didn't have to go home and come back and do that all again so I was like yes and they're like this is happening and then I remember telling them about my other two deliveries I delivered my first Liam in five hours and I did that without any medicine and then I delivered Asher I was induced and had an epidural and delivered him in three hours. And so they were like, wait, what? So I was kind of expecting like, it'll be quick. Like this will be quick. And I told them that and they were like, oh, okay, like let's get the room ready. So then they were hustling. They were getting things hooked up. They got me my epidural because I wanted that epidural. I wanted that epidural, <sighs> which was a really good thing that I got it because the way that everything progressed, I think it was good for my body to be able to relax a little bit. Yeah. I was so excited. You were coming. You were coming. You were making your way, weren't you? Yeah.
So where yeah. were you at? So then they got an epidural and we chilled. Remember, mm-hmm. we were laying in bed yep. and I took a couple pictures. So I was yep. like, oh, we're in labor. And I posted to Instagram. Mm-hmm. Well, then we, we took, and a, I, we well, took had, a nap. I had gotten that epidural and we took a nap for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I remember I progressed until about an eight. That's right. And it, everything kind of stopped. Yeah. But I don't remember how much time that took. Well, it was from the point where you were six and a half or six to when you had Judah. It was 6.30 in the morning. I so know. So that was, it was almost seven hours. I know. It was a long. And so I think by the time you were me. eight, from the time you were an eight to you had Judah was easily two and a half to three hours. I know. It was a so long So I, I would say that we woke up around four because your, your contractions started happening harder. And then they noticed the fluctuation of the heartbeat. Yeah, that's what happened. And they were really concerned. Mm-hmm. Well, they were having a hard... First off, they were having a hard time keeping the monitor on his heartbeat. Mm-hmm. That was a whole yep, issue. Because he would itself. move and then it well, would, it it would was stop. Because it belly. Yeah, he would move and then they, they wouldn't right. be able to catch his heartbeat. And then when she started contracting hard, oh, um, his, heartbeat his heartbeat would, would go dip. Down. That's and right. so they so they really scary. got concerned there, and so there was about a once it really started getting serious, it was about probably four fifteen to four thirty when that started happening, and then about an hour before Judah was born, they had to actually do an internal oh. heart monitor and put it on his on his head. They had to break her water. Okay, so the heart rate thing was probably one of their bigger concerns, mm-hmm. and just because he wasn't coming as quick as we thought he was going to come. And every time I would have a hard contraction, his heart rate would go down. And then the monitor would lose his heart rate altogether. And the nurses were like, I remember at one point, our nurse came in. She held my hand and she said, we need to pray right now. Well, I remember what it was now. So you weren't progressing over an eight. And right. so the doctor was like, okay, well, maybe if we break her water, it will force it will force it to get, it will force her to dilate more. So he did that. Um, and then right. that drastically made his heart his heart rate go down because there wasn't oh, there wasn't fluid there right. anymore and so it, it well, made it, so the cord would pull mm-hmm. tighter around his neck well and they did the internal heart rate monitor mm-hmm. so they were up there and then they did they did a catheter they found they did <laughs> catheter so they broke my water they did an internal heart rate monitor and i think this was all like in between four to six mm-hmm. and and then it was still, I was still having contractions, but I was only, I want to say it was only like at that point, I don't know what time it was, but I was about a nine. Mm-hmm. You didn't get much over nine. I didn't get much over nine when I delivered, mm-hmm. but remember the doctor came in and gave an ultrasound because mm-hmm. yep. they were trying to figure out why he wasn't. Why she wasn't oh, progressing And faster. I was literally up on the bed on all fours and mm-hmm. they're like, okay, can you move this way? Can you move that way? So mm-hmm. praise God, I got an epidural or else all of those contractions I was having while I was literally up on all fours with my everything showing to everyone mm-hmm. was so intense because I think they were trying to get him to move. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get him Ugh, to move because he was so he was, he was in a funny position. He was kind of sideways, I think. Do you remember they put water back up? Yep. Then they pumped water <laughs> back up because his heart rate was was falling. So then they oh, put water back up for saline. Oh, I remember then, at one point all I could think of was I just want this precious baby out of me and yep. I just want him healthy and I just want to mm-hmm. hold him in my arms. Because for a couple hours there, it was just so intense and yep. just not what we were expecting. Yep, it's true. I just remember our my OB coming in, and he was just so quiet. I think I was like nine centimeters. Mm-hmm. Oh, then he it was about. Six he told o'clock. her to bear down then, uh-huh. very quietly, and she didn't know what bear down meant. I didn't know what bear down. <laughs> no, I didn't. I had no idea. I was like, bear down, bear down. What does that mean? And then everybody was kind of watching me. And, and I, I think like, I told her, did I tell you? You're like, you can push, honey. Yeah. I was like, what? Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a contraction. They were like, bear down. And I was like, what just happened? And I didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, you want me to push? I can push way mm-hmm. harder than that. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. And so I, I told him, I was like, you let me know when I can need to push. I will push this baby out. It took quite a bit of pushing to get his, to get him to crown. And then once he How crowned. How many pushes was it? Oh, it was easy. I, Ten. It was, Nine, why, we were probably pushing for what, 45 minutes? No, uh uh-uh. No? No, 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 no. We weren't pushing for more than about 10 minutes. What? I maybe, don't maybe 15. But it wasn't that oh, long, was but you were, so out of it, it was, but you were pushing so hard, you were exerting a lot of energy. And so, yeah, I think I was, you had to push about oh 10, my gosh, 15 I was times maybe. So hard. And then once he crowned and then his shoulders popped out, then the doctor had to really work quickly and get the, because the cord was all tight around his neck when mm, he came out. It was so intense. And so the doctor had to, he, he, but he got did it all. He did such a great oh, job. Oh, he did an amazing job. He did he was such a great excellent. job. Excellent. 
Yeah. He was very, very seasoned. Oh, and, and he so, was so calm and peaceful yeah. about all of it. And, mm -hmm. oh. But yeah, once he came out then, Judah was, I mean, he came out and he was big and He's hairy. A big Just boy. big and hairy. He had hairy. all a bunch of hair in his big head. Big hands oh, and big, big hands feet. And feet. He was just, yeah, oh, he was it was awesome. So sweet. I remember they laid him on my chest, mm -hmm. and the first thing I did, because he was crying, mm -hmm. first thing I did was rub his little forehead. Mm -hmm. And he, his and forehead. then he just, and then it was, he was the easiest baby. There was only one night, so that next mm -hmm. night then we stayed there, and he was seriously the most just relaxed. And he's just kind of he proved so to be that sweet. way. He's just a sweet, calm, peaceful little baby. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't make a noise until he's yeah. hungry, and right. that's about it. Yeah, yeah I can't believe he's three awesome. months old. Time is flying. I feel like I just want to have four more babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love that process. <laughs> it's a lot of babies. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. work raising kids, but it's so worth it. Yeah, amen. It's fun to remember. It is fun to remember. It. Well, because I did the footage of me finding out I was pregnant with him. Oh, yeah. And then I did the footage like of, remember, mm -hmm. his his uh, gender mm -hmm. we did the gender reveal and so yep. it's just so sweet to remember now yeah that's awesome his birth and his birth story yep yeah we are very blessed very very thanks for watching guys